Hi guys, this is Pole Position RC with you once again, and we are nearly finished with the MF01X uh, Tamiya Touring Car. Uh, sorry, Tamiya Mini Rally Car. Um, so here's uh, up to the point where we've got to so far. Um, and that is up to step 32 is what we finished. So you can see the very last steps we've done is attach the front body post and the front bumper. So this is me kind of uh, like refreshing my memory because it's been a little while since I've since I've uh, been at the uh, at the work desk here. But yeah, so the next step is to attach the pinion and the motor spacer to the motor. So let's see if we can find that. All right, so there we are. Interesting, uh, I like that it's got a little thing here. They're always very kid safe, you know, with the stickers on the car. Of course, I don't have the safety stickers on this, but you know what I mean. Um, with Tamiya, they always like to do this sort of thing. Uh, so let's see if we can actually get this off. There we are. This is torque tuned Mabuchi RS540. So 540 is, I think is the spacing, it's either the spacing between the screws or it's the overall diameter of this sucker. You know, I've always wondered about that because you can get different uh, uh, 280 and 380 motors and stuff like that. So let's see what it actually is. 540, oh, no, I think it's the length, isn't it? Yeah, it's the overall length of the motor can from this point there to the end of the can there. So yeah, learn something new every day, don't you? It's pretty handy. Um, okay, so we've got this thing here, which is some sort of gasket or spacer. So, well, they call it the motor plate. Okay, now where's the other bits here? Ah, here we are. So we're just going to, so we're gonna need, that's the pinion that we need. And the pinion set screw. Ah, they give you two of them, so that's good. In case you lose one. So there we go. And just put those over there on my Cal RC. You can't see them. I'll move this. The Cal RC magnetic parts tray. So uh, Cal RC, of course, providing the the work space that we're working on, and lots of cool parts trays that are really, really making things very handy for us. Um, okay. So I'm gonna use the tools that they're giving us here. So here's our motor plate. And we've got a couple of black O-rings I don't wanna lose. So I'm just gonna leave those in the bag. And we've got this here. I'm just gonna get some blue Loctite on it. You don't need to go with the red stuff because that's the really super strong stuff, but the blue will be plenty strong enough. Hopefully that is in focus. So I'm just putting some Loctite on it because I don't want that to go missing, uh, you know, to work itself loose or anything. Okay, so this is an 18 tooth, looks like a 48 pitch pinion. No, 48, I think so. So I'm just gonna screw that in just a little bit. And let's see, it doesn't seem to matter which way this goes on. So this is basically just like a paper gasket, I guess. And that will keep, I suppose, that will keep the dirt and stuff like that from getting inside the, uh, the actual differentials uh, case there. Okay. All right. So let's see, pinion 
pinion stopper. That's weird. Okay, this is a new one to me. I imagine what that is. It's a it's like a just a proper spacer, so you know exactly how far the pinion should be out. That's interesting. Interesting way to do it for sure. So basically, you get your your tool. It's a 1.5 mil hex wrench. And you just hold this in place, if I'm understanding that. And then you just push it out as far as it will come. So I'm pushing it so the pinion gear is pushing against the inside of this thing, okay? So I'm pushing there and then just basically just tighten it in place. And that's it, that's how far that should sit out. That's an interesting, that's, I've never seen a tool that will do that. That's a, a one use tool. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this just a little bit more torque. Notice I'm putting the short end and just give that a little bit more See how much more torque I can put on there, because I don't want that to come off. Okay, now we're getting some, the three, three by 27 mil screws. And these aren't long enough. Ah, here we are. These are the 27 mil screws, the really long ones there. Now you can tell that these are the correct length because we've got the one-to-one -one or full-size uh, parts size reference there. Okay, so that's how we know. And there's this metal spacer that goes between them, or it's more of a brace, I suppose. Okay, and also because this is going into metal, I'm going to Go ahead and put some Loctite on these threads also. Not of a mass amount, just enough to coat the threads, kind of like uh, when you grease it, because when this dries, it makes a, a nice hard... That's my, this is my method for spreading out uh, when I, when I, <laughs> spreading out the Loctite when I put too much on. Okay. Okay, so, you see how that goes on there, and you see how they fit through. And then, I'm going to put it this, no, I'm going to put it that way. Now this is the hard part. And then just give it a couple of turns just to make sure it's in there so I can put the other one in. There we are. And then these get tightened on just a bit more. And then so this is, um, now it says here, uh, check the gear clearance through the peephole as shown below. So this little tiny window that's just above the brace. If the model runs sluggishly, readjust. Allow enough clearance for gears to run smoothly. And it, and it shows you uh, how they're supposed to work, okay? So in Japanese, this is, uh, that's a check mark. So that's good, these are bad, okay? So, and it also gives you a couple of different, uh, well, several different options there. We've got an 18 tooth in here. So that is right in the middle range. So you can go as small as 16 and up to a 20. Okay. Basically the higher the pinion, the higher the, the gearing, the faster top speed you'll have. So in basically, so. If you can just see in there, now this is not like a typical touring car, okay? So you're going to have to, you can't really play with it. Like if this were an exposed gear there, you'd be able to just like give it a little bit of movement and just make sure it's, um, it's nice and tight. 
but not too tight. Um, but that, if you can see in there, that looks like it's okay. So we'll give it our first run and uh, not being experienced, very experienced um, mini builders, we're just going to just uh, take it easy on the first run and make sure that that's not too tight. If anything, it looks a little bit too loose, but we'll see. Okay, now the electronics. Okay, so we've got a, a, a receiver, just a basic one. Um, 2.4 gigahertz, of course, because that's what we need. That's what we want. We don't want to have to mess with any crystals or anything like that. Um, now, this is just out of an RTR kit that we've had for a while, and we're just repurposing it. So as you can see, we're just taking off the the double-sided tape goop that was on the bottom. So, and then the other thing we have to find is the, we need to find the speed controller. Because basically, we're going to be having, that's gonna sit right there. And then the speed controller is gonna sit right there. Okay, so we'll be right back with the speed controller. Okay, so found the bag with the speed controller and of course it was in the box where we last left it um, when we were taking everything out. So here's our instructions. It's a TBLE-02S. So, okay. Um, censored. Oh, is it brushless capable? Wow. Okay. Um, interesting. So it actually will run a censored brushless motor. Okay, here's the English instructions. Okay. And brushed motors over 25 turns. So don't know how many turns this is. It's probably well over 25 turns. But we're gonna leave that in there. But I think that's, that's actually really, really cool. Um, I had no idea that it uh, was a brushed and brushless motor. Um, okay. Right, so this is uh, your setup information. Four brake and reverse. Um, it's not super powerful. We'll take up to 7.2 volts. So that is, I wonder if it'll work with uh, 7.4 um, doesn't seem like it's going to work with uh, a lipo mo uh, motor. Uh, okay, so that kind of takes the shine off it a bit. But we're going to go for it. Um, pretty sure we have a... a uh, standard to me a plug battery around here somewhere okay so there we are it's a yeah it's a good size meaning it's a little big but you know it's a bit it's a it's an rtr spec uh motor uh speed controller there's no sensor cable that comes with it but um i mean just the fact that it even accept censored uh, motors is interesting. Preset to brush motor mode, not brushless motor mode as stated in the manual, is ready to be used with the brush motor in this kit. So that's good. Use a sensor cable not included with brushless motors, of course. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, so we'll set those aside for now. So it's already set to brushed motor mode and it will fit perfectly right in that little box there. You see, that's that's pretty good. And, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so we're gonna start needing our double-sided tape here. Of course, so let's just make sure we're doing this by the book. So.
Let's get uh, some tape on it. Now usually there's one side that comes off really easily and one side that doesn't. And surprisingly, amazingly, both sides of this come off pretty easily. That's, that's good. Okay, so we're going to stick this. Let's stick it that way. Okay, and then, oops, it's not wanting to. Okay, so that is going to be quite secure. Now, because I'm an old-time racer, I like to one have my wires kind of neat as neat as I can so I'm just going to uh, coil this up and this is just an old trick and what this does is it basically just uh, rather than using a zip tie which doesn't look as nice um, even though there are zip ties included, which I'm probably going to end up using anyway for the motor wires and such. Okay, so now we want to make sure that the on direction is facing forward. So there we go. That's what I was starting to say, actually. Because I'm an old-timey racer, um, I'm going to have the on position of the switch face forward. And the reason why you do that, the reason why it's a good idea is so if you do hit something you're not going to accidentally switch off the car <laughs> and it sounds silly but it does happen uh, especially in racing because when you're racing and you hit a barrier or another car that's died on the on the track or something like that and the car just stops and the marshal picks up the car and they're like um okay I, I don't know what to do and you're like switch it back on and, you, and he's saying i don't know how because i don't know how you've got your car set up that's why one reason why you do that so i'm going to coil i'm gonna i'm gonna coil these wire the the server wire as well but because i don't want it to basically just drag along this thing and get all uh, uh, bind up the drive shaft or rub the wires off and basically kill them kill the servo um, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to attach this because this is part of the step as well And this is a much lighter piece of electronics. And I'm just going to have it with the, the wire as close to this thing as I can so that uh, I can have as much range as possible. Okay. It's a bit weird how it, it's actually going to be rubbing on that, but it's that's not a, a spinning piece or anything. So I'll be all right. So I'm just going to very quickly just take this off just so I can get the receiver wire up into the hole of the antenna mount. So you'll see what I mean in a second. Right, there we are. Oops. Don't try and pick up something by piece that isn't attached. Okay, so let's see. It's not exactly telling us which wires to attach from the speed controller to the motor but it does show us 
the middle pair of wires go to the motor. Okay, so we're going to, we're just going to go with that. Um, so it'll be these two. Okay, so we're just going to guess that the yellow goes to yellow and make sure that this this uh, rubber boot goes nicely over where it needs to go over. Okay, if that makes any sense. So you can see, well, hopefully you can see the, the larger clear rubber boot has gone over the the bullet connector completely and hopefully I can make this a little bit more clear because they're almost the same diameter there now that's better so now if we push those together we have a nice solid connection and that is protected mostly from water and splashes and so whatnot. Of course, water can really get up in there if you drive it through deep water, but um, let's not anticipate that we're gonna be doing that. So, now, with this wire here, the middle, the, the orange one, you're just gonna get what to me I call the nylon band, or what I call the zip tie, and we're just going to tie this up just so it's not dangling again and in the way of anything. So we're not going to make it super tight, I don't think. No, we'll leave that one a little bit loose. Cut it off. And we've got another one here. And if this is your first RC car, maybe these are your first zip ties or nylon ties, wire or nylon band, whatever. Um, but if this is not your first RC car, that you probably have a bag of these things anyway. So um, feel free to use as many as you like to secure the wires in any way you please. Okay, so now, um, now, okay, so this is just going to disappear under there. It's gonna to connect to the battery when we get one installed so now we've got now this is not um, coiling these wires because it's so long it's not a foolproof thing so it you might still be a good idea to tie these up okay So basically, just just going to sort of train them in this spiral. And the dark wire faces to the outside. And the servo goes into channel one. And then we're going to do the same thing. This is a much stiffer wire, this one. Doesn't need, it's a bit shorter than the servo wire. But still can always use some neatening up. There we go, channel two. Okay, so when we get a battery, we're going to just bind the receiver to the uh, to the radio that we've got and that is that's that for that step that's step 35 okay right so 36 install the wheels onto the tires okay so here are our wheels and tires and we had a quick look at these when we first opened up the box um, I do already just absolutely love these wheels uh, tires Look at those, those are so cool. And I think they're even directional as well because these, these are packaged separately. So, 
got tread wall patterns on them. Yep, they're directional. How awesome is that? Yeah, that is so cool. Okay, so we've got those there. We've got our wheels, which are the classic uh, Mini Cooper scale uh, gravel rally, rally wheels. So these can be painted like gold or whatever. Um, I might even just for the heck of it, just throw a, a wash on these to make them look uh, a little bit, you know, pr add a, a bit of depth to these. Basically just like uh, some black ink or very watered down uh, black paint in there. And they'll look really extra cool. So. Just clipping these off with our handy dandy plastic parts clippers. Okay, now ideally what you want to do is get some sort of cleaner on, on the rims of the wheels and tires. So in here, this little channel there and along the outer edge and also on the tires as well. So that basically will um, clear off any manufacturing oils that are left over from the molding process um, is the very, very short way to describe that. Um, and you can get a good amount of cleaning done just with the, just using a clean, dry towel or cloth rag on all of these places where the glue is going to be attaching because you don't want the, uh, basically you don't want the, uh, the glue to be repelled by the oils because these are all molded pieces and you want the glue to be able to run everywhere it needs to so it can stick the tires securely onto the wheels. Now I note that there aren't any foams with these so um, and there is a breather hole in the wheels so I'll be all right because uh, I'm just thinking that because if you do actually plan to run these in water um, the water can really mess up the foams like just stagnant horrible pond water or stream water. Um, there are like microbes and all sorts of nasty stuff in it uh, potentially that can eat away at the foams eventually, especially just the cheap open cell foams that you get with most uh, you know RTR kit tires, but there are no foams. So not something you desperately have to worry about. If you are, you can get a hole punch um, like you would get for a, a leather belt and just punch a hole right in the middle, um, say on this side and then on the opposite side as well. So when you spin up the tires, the the the, uh, the water expands to the outside through centrifugal force, I think it is, and it just sprays out. So, oops. Okay, I can't remember if I've already wiped these, but I think I have. Just in case. Okay, so this is uh, something I would normally skip, but I suppose there were some talking points there. So just gonna wipe these down and then um, get to the gluing process, which is should be pretty easy. These are fairly firm rubber uh, compound tires. Um, but without, uh, because they're molded quite thin, they have a bit more flex in them than if they were some like really thick and solid chunky tires. Okay, so that's good enough. All right, so we've got some thin CA glue here. Um, this is the stuff I like to use. Um, you can get all kinds of different uh, thin glues. There's various brands. This is just the one I prefer. So you can use a pair of scissors or a clipper 
And then ideally, we have one of these little very, very, very thin tubes that we stick onto the end. And we can make it quite a bit shorter. So what this will do is it lets us, basically it's a super precision tip for the application of the glue. So now we just stretch this on. If you've ever seen, been to a car mechanic and seen how the mechanic gets their, uh, gets the, or tire changing, gets it on there. Okay, so I always find it's easiest to put my fingers in the inside of the, uh, of the wheel um, and then just spread this out with my thumb like that and then just add the glue to the inside. But that's the easy part. So I like to get the hard part done first, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So uh, I'm going to do this side first, the inside of the wheel. And then when that's nice and dry, come back and do the outside of the wheel. Okay, so just going to assemble these all now. Okay, so we've got them all assembled, um, installed, and we're just gonna make sure that we look on every single one of these before we actually glue them, that the tire is nicely seated on that rim on both sides. And you can see on the inside rim here, there's about a half mil of rubber that sticks out from the, from the edge of the rim, okay? So hopefully you can see that. And all pretty much the same here as well. Okay, so that's kind of your indication. Now every set of wheels and tires is going to be different, so you just have to, you know, work with it um, and just see what you've got. So now we're going to do this before we glue each and every wheel. And if you do, usually what's going to happen is the inside of that bead is going to be catching on something but these are pretty nicely made wheels and tires. So um, they're made to work together, um, obviously made by the same brand. Um, so they should fit just fine. Okay, so now we're gonna do the inside rim first. And this is a very, very thin glue. So we're just gonna be pushing it. You can see it coming through the tube there. And there we go. Sorry, this is a medium setting glue. So it's not as thin as I thought. Oh, that's all right. Usually I like to use the, I, I just simply grabbed the wrong bottle. But actually this is working fine for me because I usually mess it up <laughs> and get way too much glue on everything. So this, this uh, thicker glue is fine. This is sort of a gel sort of glue. And then what I'm doing is I'm just running an extra bead along the inside. It's not so critical along the inside of the bead. It's more important on the outside, on this face. The other thing we should mention is to make sure that the Tamiya logo is on the outside of all these wheels. Okay, so this is the outside face and we've got the Tamiya logo there. Okay, so there's our logo. There's our logo and again, there is our logo. Okay, so I'm going to do the inside rim of all of the tires now and just let them set aside to dry. Okay, so there's our four tires. The inside rim is glued, and we're just going to get a, uh, our shop towel again. You use paper towel as well, and just basically just blot dry these. Um, the inside face of the wheel isn't very critical on how perfectly neat, so I'm usually not that bothered about uh, making it look absolutely perfect. Well, to be honest, the outside face either. <laughs> um, 
Now, you can you can use um, zip kicker or accelerator. Um, it's a spray chemical, basically that instantly hardens the uh, the the glue, and that is perfectly fine as well. Okay, so now that these are all dried, pretty much. Okay, so they're dry to the touch, which is dry enough. They're not sticking to my fingers, okay? So now we've got the actual thin stuff that I like to use. This is the stuff that bonds super thin penetrating. Um, so now we'll show how this works. So basically, again, we're pulling the bead completely away, not all the way off like that, just pulling it away so that we can get deep inside. We want that flat area of the, of the wheel on the inside edge there. We want that to be coated with this th super thin stuff, okay? And we're just gonna run this along there. Now it sets very, very quickly. And if you put it along that, that sort of shelf there of the wheel, it'll just naturally just run down because it's very, very thin stuff. If you put too much, it runs out like that and you have to get your rag to soak up the excess. But that is okay. And we're going to set that aside for a few seconds and you can see it's already starting to to grip and in some places it's already nice and strong there so we're going to come back and just add a half a drop or so only where it's needed and there we go So that, we'll come back and look at that one. But that is pretty much it. You can easily overdo it, which I usually do. I'm not the greatest at gluing tires. And it's also not my, uh, my most favorite part of building a car. But it's something you have to learn if you're gonna be doing uh, RC on a semi-regular basis. At least if you want to have custom wheels and tires. You can always buy pre-built, but then that's boring. Okay, so you can see how much quicker this is going. And because we're only pulling the, the tire away from the rim just for a few seconds at a time at most, we're not stretching the rubber of the tire to make it all loose and everything. Plus, again, this is a very firm rubber. This isn't uh, like racing rubber, uh, like you'd find on a on a buggy or a or a truggy or something like that. So it's um, it's very quick to pull itself back onto the rim. Okay. Now we're going back to that first tire and we just give it a quick check and that is good. And the second one, again another quick check, that one's good. That one's good. And this is this one's still just a tiny bit wet, but it's only been about 30 seconds since we've done it, so all good. Okay, so that's why you want to have one of these really thin tubes. Very, very handy. Very good stuff. And again, thin super glue. Super thin, if you can. And there we are. Now, if that is clear, you can reuse the tube. Just blow through it. And hopefully, if all goes well, you can reuse that tube. If not, they're not that expensive, but you know, I don't like to be throwing away stuff like that. All right, 
So I imagine the next thing is going to be installing the wheels and tires, which means installing the bearings, the final bearings. Okay, and there we are. So okay, so we've got various uh, cross pins. Those are going to hold the the hex hubs in place. We're not using the plastic uh, bushings again, remember. Um, where's the last of our bearings? We've got five bearings left. How do we have five bearings left? Okay. I'm supposed to have four bearings left, <laughs> as far as I know. But all right. Okay. So we've got our Cow RC Utter Butter um, syringe of sticky goopness. So what we're going to do basically is well, we're going to take our get our hex hubs off of parts trees here. Now what I prefer are the what I call locking hex hubs. I think most people call them that. Um, those will actually lock into place um, very nicely. But um, we're just running this pretty much out of the box. Okay. So we're just going to, again, goop some, some grease, some thick grease onto these bearings. And this will basically protect them from uh, water and uh, moisture. There's already some thin bearing grease in there, but this is a lot thicker stuff. And uh, as I've explained previously, this is basically the same sort of thing that um, scale crawler guys will do for their for their trucks when they're when they're when they're making everything waterproof. So we're not making everything waterproof necessarily, not fully waterproof. Um, but we, oh, I meant to do the outside of that one while it was in place. It's a lot easier. Or maybe not. Yeah, it's actually just easier to do it while it's in my hand. Oops, sorry about that. bit more work but I'm just getting used to using uh, putting these on okay so now we're just going to put the rest of these bearings in place and the last one is going on Okay, so now we just need the wheel nuts. And the cross wrench. Okay, so now I don't think it really matters a huge amount uh, what side of the tires these, because these are directional. You can see, I mean, those are those are directional tires. It's pretty cool. I don't know which way they're meant to go. I'm going to put them on this way so that the chevrons face uh, sort of 
the way, I don't know, the way I kind of aesthetically prefer them. I don't know which is, which is correct, quote unquote. But this is, you know, I've been saying as we've been building the car, um, there are certain points where the car just feels like it's coming together. And obviously it's pretty much together. Um, but, you know, putting the wheels on for the first time is definitely one of those really cool moments. Because everything is together finally so this step has gone on quite a bit longer or this video has gone on quite a bit longer than i intended but um hopefully uh hopefully your patience has um been borne out And uh, you appreciate uh, <laughs> appreciate the weight. So I, was, I forgot to do this step. I'm just going to cut it just above where the where the end of the antenna is. And there. So basically, that clear bit needs to be parallel to the ground, and it ends just below the cut point. Okay. So now, um, let's go ahead and chuck the body on. Um, well, actually, I need to put the the battery pack holder on. Sponge tape. It's not very clear, is it? I suppose does that mean it goes on the bottom. Sponge tape. Use RC cleaner to remove any oil before attaching. Yeah, that's... I wonder if it said that. I mean, that's good advice, but I wonder if it said that here. Yeah, use RC cleaner spray. Um, all right. Does that go on the bottom, or... I'm going to put it along the top, because you want the roll center, or the center of gravity, as low as possible. And it seems to imply that it only goes on the chassis bit. So. Okay, so I'm going to get a fresh cloth that hasn't been contaminated with any grease and stuff like that, just to clean that top section where this uh, sponge tape is going to go. And then I'll show you a little tip here. Once you get the backing tape off, just put the sponge tape on the on the tip of a knife like that. And then you can place place that wherever you need it. Like so. Okay. So, second piece of sponge tape going in like that. Just press it. Okay, now we're ready for the body. Or no, we're not. We need to get the battery holders on. Where are they? Here we are. Yeah, so I kind of got uh, carried away with the putting things in place. Ooh, there we are. There's our battery holders. So it does say um, to bend these uh, these clips. So I'm just going to just uh, get my stainless steel knife because I don't want to scratch up this 
really cool CowRC work surface. So we've got one there. And you don't need to bend it 90 degrees, just bend it enough so that you can grab it. And if you have any spare body clips or uh, zip ties, you can just make a little loop so that you can pull those off nice and easy. But they're not too hard to get off. But if you've got gloves on and it's cold or it's wet or whatever, it's, it, it is good to have a little bit extra grip. Okay. Tell you what, I'm going to finish off uh, this video here because this has gone on really, really long, uh, even once I edit it down. Um, so anyway, this has been PolePositionRC.com, as you can see right there. Um, please check us out on Facebook. Just search for Pole Position RC Gear, and on Instagram, Pole Position RC Gear, and of course um, the website PolePositionRC.com. Um, so we'll see you in the next video where we will be um, installing and uh, and finishing up the body. Um, which is really, really cool. I can't believe how good it came out. I'm very, very happy with it. So anyway, we'll uh, see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe, of course, if you uh, want more of these videos coming into your inbox. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.